Gateway Housing Association. The last thing the judge said to you was to not correspond to Mr Stafford anymore, correspond to his solicitor. Now I received a letter last week and two more today. All kinds of threats. Same old story. Both dated the same date actually. 31st of January. You appear to be a law unto yourself. This is a place where I've had to visit on a regular basis lately due to the harassment. I'm waiting to see a consultant psychiatrist at the end of the week, end of next week. But this is a peaceful protest, a protest against Gateway Housing Association for attempting to make me homeless, my son and my dog. This will all be on YouTube tonight, Staffs number three. A peaceful protest. All right, I'm all right, me mate, I'm having a peaceful protest. That's all right, you, you, you're filming the area. Right. Can I ask why you're filming the area, sir? I'm filming the area because those people are trying to make me homeless. Right, okay. All right. All right, yep. No Nothing problem. to do with BAC, mate. I just wanted everyone to listen, mate. Yep, no worries. Thanks very much. Cheers, mate. I understand that British aircraft, you know what I mean? Okay. Might have got a picture of a Delta jet or something. Peaceful protest, a peaceful protest against Gateway Housing Association. Have a look. Have a good look. It's a peaceful protest. The Gateway Rent Recovery Officers are doing the very best to put me on the streets and put my son on the streets. Is that an Apple iPhone, love? It's all right. Be on YouTube, staff's number three. I'll send it to you later. How are you doing, officer? Is it Peter? It is. Right. I'm Lindsay, I'm a QCSO for Preston. Right. Okay. I believe you've been spoken to by the policing team. Uh, regarding, some, regarding something that was put on YouTube, yes. Yeah. Well, they've spoken to you that you can't put personal names. Uh, she's putting personal names all over me and sending not listening to the judge. That was nothing to do with personal names. It what? was to do with the fact that I had a sledgehammer in my hand. This, this at the minute is classed as harassment. I don't think so. The only person who's harassing anyone is that she's harassing me. Can you just put the camera down? Uh, I don't think I'm obliged to do that. I'd, I'd rather have a conversation with you when I've not got a camera. I'd rather have a conversation either I can look back after. I'm suffering mental health problems at the moment where I can't recall anything over certain periods of time. I've finished my protest anyway. I'm leaving now. You're leaving now? I'm leaving soon. Right, well, I will have to report back to Tony Stables that you put... You didn't do that. You do that. I'll tell you what. You do that. What's your name? Sorry? Lindsay. 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 Yeah. Lindsay Anders. Right, Lindsay. You, you report back to Tony. Okay. And if you would tell Tony to give me a ring, please. Because I believe the actual first part of the, uh, when he came round to see me, when he made the statement about, you know, when he said that I'd actually been abusive towards her, okay. right? I believe they only did that because they thought I'd put something on there would get me into serious trouble. Right? That's why they informed you as the police right. and had someone coming round. Okay. Right? Because from then on, she's done nothing but harass me. Yeah. Now, Judge Reynolds, as it says at the bottom there, told her not to respond to me and to respond to my solicitor. I've since had five letters with eviction wrote down the side and I've just received one this morning after walking out to court on Friday. Okay, I don't know about your, specifically about your case, but right. it's, it's Community Gateway, it's not. Letters, she's took it personally. She, she works for Community she Gateway. She has took it personally. It's absolutely nothing to do with the rest of the rent. She's took it personally. She, she hasn't. She, can't, she has took it. Do that. She's done she it. She works for community. Well, I've, I've just actually wrote to the housing ombudsman to complain because I'm accusing her of taking it personally. Right. Well, right. I, 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 I can't get involved with with community gateway and what's going on there. All I can say now is you need to leave because that is classed as harassment. I don't think the statements that she's made to me and the police have not visited again. The police came to visit me due to the fact that I have a. My left arm is paralysed basically, well, with my right arm I train with a sledgehammer in the house. Right, now I was lifting that. 
Also, the police told me about the fact that in a conversation he had with her over the phone, that at the end of the conversation, after I put the phone down, I said something like, you are a C-U-N-T. But I'd, put it, I'd said it after the phone had gone down. After the phone had gone down. So I didn't say it to her. I said it purely and simply to myself. Because that's how I felt it was after the conversation had gone on. Right. Is that all right? You take that. Why is that classed as harassment? Because you've put her name on there. We do it. No, but he, he, he's on £200 a week and he pays £100 in insurance and petrol driving to Manchester every day. Irrespective of his outgoing, that's the contribution he needs to make towards the household. Yeah, yeah, but do, do you not understand that? The sums of it are, there is no money left. He has £30 a week if he pays that after travelling to Manchester every day there and back. Right, but well, I mean, that's his decision to have a job where it costs him so much. No, it's, it's the only possibility he got of a, of a job. Nice. He got he got off his own back and got himself a decent job in Manchester off a of a friend's father and he, he he leaves the house at seven in the morning, gets in at seven at night, and his wages are two hundred and ten pounds after tax, after tax and insurance. Well, to contribute to your household, then he wouldn't be able to contribute, he wouldn't be able to live on his Give it again, brother. Come on, here we are. Well, Mr Simmons from the local to Princeton. Yeah. Yeah, what's well, yeah. the idea? I know you are, mate, I've seen you before. Yeah. Who are you, mate? It's Mr. Lewis. What are you doing parked in front of my drive? I just give my son, away. my son might want to come in any time now, right? Move and it. you're parked right in front of my drive. I shall move, just, it, just move it. Move it now, please. I just come to let you know, Mr. Lewis, that uh, the Cooley Gateway have issued a warrant of possession for your property. Right. Um, are you with it? Do you No, not at all. Is, is that, that Stand back. The, um, I understand that Helen's helping you out, Helen Dan. Are you actually, have you been drinking? No, but you have. No, but you sound like, you smell like you've been drinking. Yeah, right. Yeah. You sound as though you've been drinking, mate. Did you notice? I don't want to know, Sophie. I'm taking nothing off you. Yeah. Do yourself a favour, mate. Go away. Goodbye. You. Take that fucking thing with you, you. Hey! Take that with you. Take it with you. Take it with you. I don't want to ever talk to any one of you ever again in my life, all right? I don't I don't want to do anything. I don't want you coming anywhere near my house again. All right, who are you? Preston Courts, evicted. This is where I'm... I am to be... Uh, the courts, the county court, have decided that I, Peter Stafford, shall be evicted on the 5th, 13th of November at 12.30. I am to be evicted. I am being evicted for... for not throwing out my son. My son is a non-dependent who cannot afford to travel backwards and forwards to Manchester, insure his car, feed himself and pay any rent at the moment. He's only a young lad. Evicted! Evicted! Evicted for not throwing my son out. Preston County Court have evicted me for not throwing my son out. On the 13th of November, I shall be evicted at 12.30 from 38 Sintra Avenue for not throwing my son out. Just been assaulted by a guy at the back there who works for G4. I've picked my phone up to telephone my mother. Yeah, and he's banging the phone into my face. Yeah? I'm making a phone call to let my mother know that the dog will be fine, that I'll be there in a couple of hours, and that man has just banged me in the face. He's banged me in the face, and the phone's hit me in the face. I've been assaulted by someone for G4S, and it's on the camera, so let's have them out. Don't what? Listen, don't you start assaulting me as well. Yeah, yeah, you get it, you may, alright. Okay, tell me what you said. Yeah, you Yeah. Right, it's the, th <coughs> Tuesday, the 13th of November, the day of the eviction. 
And uh, yeah, I've had an horrendous 14 hours, right? I'm keeping me head up, so don't worry. But uh, I've witnessed and experienced what can only be classed as police brutality. Yeah? By Preston Police. Not in a physical way, in both a mental way and, uh, well, well, in some senses in a physical way also. Yeah. The whole intention of yesterday was to go <clears throat> to Citizens Advice, ask Citizens Advice, a lady I know there, to get in touch with the Department of Work and Pensions to, to fax through a proof of my benefits. I need that to go to the court to show the judge the situation I'm in, and the reason why I, uh, I'd i like him to defer the, the actual uh, eviction. Anyway, I got to Citizens Advice, no problem. Uh, she got in touch with Works and Pensions. They said they would fax it through. They'd fax it through to, uh, to Preston's Job Centre, <clears throat> where I arrived an hour later. Now, as for the first time last night at 12... Uh, all around that time when I got home, when my son finally knew where I was, I saw the look of terror in his face. The look of terror, the look of this was really happening. It was all over. He hasn't been undertaken in really. The first time I've seen him look like that since he lost his mum and everybody else, I'm not looking for no pity. But I'll tell you something, the people in this country who are involved with children and everything else are clueless. The government wants you to destroy your children so they can send them off to wars. Yeah, they want them to be bums. Yeah, the first time I've seen it for all those years, that real look of terror, of like a little boy lost. Yeah, and you people who instigate this kind of thing in families or whatever are, oh, I only have one word, you are ignorant, but sorry, two words, ignorant scum. That is the only word, ignorant scum to put the children of this country what you put them through. All the good work destroyed in one flash. Mm. I've got some wonderful videos of my son's terribly traumatic periods in life. Yeah, I'm not prepared to show them to the public yet, but I will show them to the public. And he's old enough to understand that, that was just a time in life. But I will, yeah. My son's room, uh, a room, this is my son's a little boy here playing football, top footballer, wonderful footballer. Us here, England, Argentina, went down to London when he was he first came to live with me. Yeah, the golf courses we used to play on in Scotland. Yeah, his wardrobe. Extremely proud of this room, this young lad. Doesn't keep it perfect, believe me, by a long way. But he's always been extremely proud of it. It's his own little base, isn't it, see? Got his computer there and everything. Yeah. Don't get much on city. But yeah, this is what he's into though. He's into his music and his bands. Don't play his football and all that now. You know? This is what he's into, look. All his music. He's all his concerts. He tries to get to if he can afford it. That's why he stops in his mates up in Manchester and all that. Yeah. Yeah, but a little boy, a young boy, a man now, who's, uh, like I say, extremely proud of his room. But as from this moment now, I'm going to have to strip it down. Put a lot of work into this place. A lot of work. That floor cost me thousands to go right through the house. I had it then. Yeah. One thing's for sure, they won't be keeping it. Here it is. Yeah. Drawers are all empty. I have to get some out with these wardrobes and that. That said, he's stopping. See you, mate. This is your own love. It's going to be going soon.
These were fucking drugs actually, you know, in the sense of stomach. Which in this drawer here, I've got a lot of stuff to man, I've got a lot of stuff I need to take out of here. Fix my fucking teeth and all that. Man. If I can't get in here, but how long will it be before I can get into my 28 day lock up? Oh, whenever you're ready, just give me 24 hours notice, that's all. So you'll be actually moving it all out within 24 hours, mate, is it? Right, we've got no time wasted here, it's two minutes to eight. And we've got the boys on the scene already. The gateway boys are here now, look. They're all here and waiting. Yeah? So it looks like a big security job. I don't know what this is going to cost. Do you? So how, how, how am I going to see what I'm doing? Sorry? The let light through. Well, let me tell you now, it's a dark house in the first place. Even with the lights on. So if we're talking about me going in the attic in health and safety, then we want to be talking about light, don't we? I won't want to fall down them stairs and hurt myself. Video on now, because they've took the fucking windows out. They've took all the windows out, right? Whether it's to let air in, I don't know. But I mean, look, there's, there's a three grand set here. It's going to be damp as fuck now. You know, and like I can say, you can see by the camera here how dark it is. I can't see fuck all. How I'm supposed to move anything out of here or get anything together, I've no idea. You know? So, uh, what I fucking suggest here is that I want to make sure that some of my stuff's not. Me. I'll be back at one o'clock, Nazi boys. Abuse you what? Abuse you new? Who's, who's abusing you? I'm just making a statement. I'm allowed to make a statement. I haven't mentioned your name. Yeah? Been worn, Been what? Right, right, that's enough, is it? That's enough, is it? Yeah? Been worn, all right, get somebody else down. Yeah? Any more abuse? Yeah? The only piece of abusing people down here, mate, are you lot abusing me? Yeah? Smile for the camera. Belson, that's where you lot should have been working. Switching the old gas ovens on. Yeah? We're going home! We're going home because he keeps calling us Nazi boys! Nazi, Nazi boys! We're going home! We've had enough! Go and get fucked. You see, Mark Hendrick, <clears throat> MP, I'm going to ask you to your face to investigate my eviction. I've been fobbed off by Preston Council, and it looks like Gateway Housing Association with every excuse going. You showed a bit of interest in the first place. Yeah, I'll forget you've ignored me. But I'll ask you, Mark Hendrick, to find out why Gateway Housing Association and Preston City Council ignored the fact that I was suffering from severe aggravated depression and had me evicted weeks after my father died who I was a full-time carer for. Yeah? I want you to ask that question. I want you to bring that up in Parliament if you need to. I want you to write to Preston Council. I want you to write to Gateway Housing Association and get the answers that only you can get. Yeah? And I'm going to ask you that to your face, Mark Hendrick MP. Right, it's 17 minutes past 7 on Tuesday, the 27th of uh, November. 
And I'm walking down to my house for my friends to meet the Terminator, Jim Shorrock, at eight o'clock to try and find out what's going on at the house, what I can move, take some stuff to bits that has to be moved. I'm just hoping there's some fucking lighting on here. I'm hoping the place has got lights or else health and safety is going to come into it. Right, we've got no time wasted here, it's two minutes to eight. And we've got the boys on the scene already. The gateway boys are here now, look. They're all here and waiting. Yeah? So it looks like a big security job. We don't know what this is going to cost. Do you? What's this costing? What's this costing the country? Hey? What's this costing the country? Huh? Send the little big lads on job as well. Huh? Send the little big lads on job today. Look, big bearded, burly men. Must be worried about my behaviour. Back to the gaff, mate. So, how, how, how am I going to see what I'm doing? Sorry? The let light through, well let me tell you now it's a dark house in the first place, even with the lights on. So if we're talking about me going in the attic in health and safety, then we want to be talking about light, don't we? I won't want to fall down them stairs and hurt myself. Do you know what I mean? Terminator, isn't it? The Terminator. Is there still a what do you call it here? A mailbox? Look at that, that's pitch dark. I'm expecting to work in here today. This house was taken over by Gateway on the 13th of November. I've not been allowed near it since. Everything will be defrosted in the freezer, the fridge, the lots off, the gas is off, everything. And I'm expected to come and work in here today and take the stuff to bits. You know? I, I'm turning the camera off because I can't see fuck all in there. Video on now because they've took the fucking windows out. They've took all the windows out, right? Whether it's still let air in, I don't know, but I mean, look, there's, there's a three grand set here, it's going to be damp as fuck now, you know, and like I can say, you can see by the camera here how dark it is, I can't see fuck all, how I'm supposed to move anything out of here or get anything together, I've no idea, you know, so well, what I fucking suggest here is that, I want to make sure that some of my stuff's not missing at all, because they took all the windows out, look, uh, the whole place is full of damp shit now. Uh, you can smell the damp. It almost smells like it did when I first moved in here, like a dirty shithole. When it was less than it left in the last time. The quilt's the lot. Two weeks it's been here like this. Never mind the upstairs. Right, you better get your gaffy down, mate. Yeah? You better get your gaffy down. Terminator. No, you go, you ring up, you've got the number, you ring up and get your gaffer down, right? Get the why big you, boys why down. You want, why you want the I want to talk to them about the state of the place. No, you ought to ring them. No, I, no, you, 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 I, I've come here have, to see you. They've asked me to come down to open up for you. I've come down, I've opened up. No vehicle, there's no way of getting any... any I've, I've, I've come to take things to pieces. I've got a bed to take to pieces. I've got a lot of furniture to take to pieces. I've got a lot of floors to take up. Yeah? Yeah? You can do. Yeah? do. What, well, in, that, in that dark, like that? You told me I can't go in the roof because the, the roof space is too dangerous, health and safety. Well, if it's fit to work in that dark in there, you better get a generator down there and some lights. You seriously expect to bring a generator? I don't know, I don't know. Well, well, get your boss down. What's your name? Bamber then, is it? Get Bamber on the phone. I'm not ringing him. Get her on the phone and get the other one in as well. Throw fall, is it? The one who's above that? No. Do you know, why don't you get yourself a job in the first place in the concentration camp, locking the Jews up? The Terminator, eh? I'll leave you to it. The Terminator. Carry on. Eh? <laughs> the Terminator. Fuck you now. I won't be doing nightmare in them conditions. It's like a third world country. Who's the big lad there? Is he there to back you? Eh? Big burly bearded man. Eh? He's a henchman. He's going to leave me here to do it, see? I 
outrageous behaviour once again by Gateway Housing Association. To be honest, it's going to dump my dad's ladders outside now. Anyone could come along and nick him. Huh? I don't see how I can work in there in them conditions unless my eyes adapt. You know? I'm going to have a look upstairs. Nearly broke my fucking neck then. It's pitch black in the place. How the fuck am I ever going to get anything out of here? I've got to come into these upstairs here. People have been rooting about and all I'm moving gear around. You know? And where's all the gear out of my loft? I don't know if people have been feeding in here or what, mate. All the fucking windows have been taken out. Yeah? How the fuck am I supposed to get anything out of there? How can I pack that stuff away? I can't see what the fuck I'm packing away! Yeah? Outrageous, to be honest. Fucking outrageous. And this bed here, which my mother gave us, when my dad got seriously ill, yeah? Look at the gear in here. This bed here, to be honest, cost thousands of pounds because of my dad's back condition. You can't see it. But, uh, it's going to be fucking rotten because there's no windows in. And it's been here for two weeks like that now. Two weeks. Two weeks yesterday since they took the house over and turned everything off. Well, I can say no more. I mean, like I say, you, you can't see anything because of the light. The front window now, and I've come down today to dismantle that wardrobe there and this bed, the main things that need to go to my mum's. I can't get near it. They took all the gear out of the attic and stuck it all in there, all in front of it. I can't fucking get near it, mate. Yeah? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I've got a torch with me. I'm going to turn my torch on somewhere. I don't know where the best place to put that is, but I mean, I would imagine the light's better coming from behind the camera, wouldn't you? I don't know, mate, to be honest, mate. But look at this. There's a bed. The wardrobes I need to dismantle at the back of there. So how the fuck am I going to do that? I told him yesterday what I was coming down to do, to dismantle gear. You know, it's took all this gear here. This is all, mate. It's all come out of the attic. Yeah. Yeah. All this stuff, the real stuff, like that desk there, that needs to be dismantled, yeah? Yeah, those drawers at the back there, that need to be dismantled, I can't get to. Because you put everything in front of them. I'm wasting my time here today, there's no doubt about it. Can't do fuck all. No? This is all stuff that can be moved. But like I say, there's no windows in now. So the place is absolutely damp as fuck. Damp as fuck. Pitch black and damp as fuck. Right? I want to keep these videos short because I need to bang these on YouTube today. This stuff is full of clothes here. Yeah? Tooler box up there, see? I don't know what to say, to be honest. I really do not know what to say. How the fuck am I supposed to get gear together? Take down this bed here and all that, where they've put everything on top of it. They're not me. I haven't touched it. They've been in here and... I'm going to take this unit down as well, this big IKEA unit. They've been here and poked their fucking noses in again. Yeah? And typical gateway, fucking comedians and fucking clowns. Jim the Terminator shot it. My fucking arse. Brush smash the fucking pieces, that. Yeah? What's all this shit thrown over here? All my plant pots destroyed and everything. Yeah? Back gate open. Yeah? Looks like the scum have been round here already, cracking it up. Yeah? What's this bags of stuff here? What's all these? Yeah? Someone's dumped a lot of shit round here, look. Huh? Is that that cheeky cunt? Huh? Table destroyed. Smashed to pieces. Yeah? Fucking outrageous, to be honest. Out fucking rageous. 
Look, throwing bottles over. Piss head. We know where that's come from, don't we? Oh, fucking Billy. Look, barbecues here. Oh, Billy Gobshite. Yeah? Outrageous. No, but look at these toys just thrown over. Yeah? Well, I never. Well, I fucking never. Yeah? Yeah? Think you fucking Like I say, look at this shit thrown over here. All thrown from next door. I've got mine to ring the fucking police. And what's the excuse for all this being thrown here like this? Yeah? Table smashed to pieces. Where's my chairs gone? Fucking scandal, this has been in the hands of Gateway for this fucking cop. See man, talk about cowboy, this cunt. Anyway, there's no fucking choice here, mate, than to ring the police or whatever. Oh, my lights been smashed at back, look. Security lights have all been smashed. Fucking outrageous. Why is the back in the condition it's in? Sorry? Why has everything been smashed up in the back? Everything's smashed up? Yeah, in the back garden. Oh, the fucking garden. shit yeah. dumped by a looks like this next door neighbour. Yeah, you want to come and take a look at this, mate? Well, yeah? Yeah? Plant pot smashed. <laughs> fucking... Stuff dumped straight over that fucking fence, all on the back, the table smashed. Everything damp as fuck in the house. Beer bottles thrown over the fence. I think we better ring the police, don't you, mate? Look, this brush, that's my brush, mate, huh? Do you think anyone's going to bring them from, mate? Where do you think they've come from, like? You know? Feel, feel them. They're full of shit, mate. So where do you think they've come from? Think someone's going to bring them up that fucking entrance and dump them there, mate? There's only one place they've come from, pal. A person who's been giving me a lot of stick. Yeah, smashed all my fucking pots of fucking plant pots. These aren't my toys. Nothing to do with me, these. Beer bottles thrown over. Yeah? You've had responsibility. Look, barbecues, that's not my barbecue. Yeah, I know whose it is. Yeah. I want the police informing. Well, I'm not, I'm not ringing the police because somebody's thrown some stuff in here. You're not? Right, right, well, let me tell you something, right? Someone round here rang the police every five minutes because my kid would play music right. at we seven at night. I don't live here anymore. This is our responsibility. And when we come to take the property, I will sort this out. No, but you have took responsibility of my goods, right? They're under your responsibility. You were the judge's statement was that they went into into storage for 28 days within two or three days. That's what they are. Within two or three days. They're in safe storage. They're not in safe storage. It's piss wet through upstairs. They're in safe storage. They're damp. They're wet through. Everything soaked. Everything I can. Listen, I told you yesterday on the phone I wasn't bringing the vehicle. I told you yesterday I was coming to dismantle stuff. Right, you've put all the gear in front of the stuff I was dismantling. The big wardrobe upstairs. Was I to know this? Well, well, no, but well, I didn't think I was going to get that to pe down. Uh, it, was, it had to be took to pieces, obviously. So we expected you to come and take what you wanted. No, you didn't. I told you yesterday. I was coming yesterday down here for you today. Told me that. You phoned me yesterday and asked for access. That's the first time you've asked for access here. That's the first time I've asked for access. It's the first time I've been able to get here, mate. I've been living all over the fucking right. place. But it's the first time you've asked me for access. We brought the, all the stuff down from the attic. It took you a week, pal, it took you a week, pal, right, to even make the statement that the gear was being stored here. Right. So what you're saying, it's the first time I've asked for an access. So I've asked for access a week after you've told me that. It's two weeks yesterday, right? What difference does it make where it's stored? Because it, it's fucking piss wet through in there. There's no windows on her, fuck all. It's not wet through. There's no windows on her, nothing. It's been pissing down, it's damp as bollocks. That's a thousand pound bed in there, right? I'll, I'll tell you what. 
to do what you've done to me is nothing short of fucking outrageous. That's my mother's shed. Yeah. I've left 70% of me gear at the flat. This is just bits hanging around here. Yeah, fridges here, two fridges. And I've left seven, and this fucking room is full to the top here. I tell you now, to do what you've done to me has been a fucking disgrace. The state party launched a major policy reform to the welfare system. Views of persons with disabilities were not meaningfully taken into account in the decision making and had little or no influence on policy decisions. Measures have caused financial hardship to persons with disabilities, resulting in arrears, debts, evictions and cuts to essentials such as housing and food. Claimants saw support that they received substantially reduced, so their essential needs such as daily personal care were not sufficiently covered. The reforms have resulted in people experiencing increased reliance on family and kinship carers, reduction in their social interaction, increased isolation and, in certain cases, institutionalisation. Reduction in services at the local level has curtailed the ability of disabled people to take part in community life. Persons with disabilities have been regularly portrayed negatively as being dependent or making a living out of benefits, committing fraud as benefit claimants, being lazy and putting a burden on taxpayers who are paying money for nothing. Persons with disabilities continue to experience increasing hostility, aggressive behaviour and sometimes attacks to their personal integrity. The inquiry also found no substantiation of the alleged benefit fraud by persons with disabilities. The state party have met the threshold of grave or systematic violations of the rights of persons with disabilities. Boom, boom. Hello, Catholic Charles Michael speaking. Hiya, mate. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I'd like to make some inquiries about uh, uh, my my application on Cumbrian Choice for some properties I've been applying for. Right, okay. Do, do, do you want to know my reference on there? Oh, what exactly were you wanting to know, sorry? Uh, it, it's just become very confusing to me as to what actually I'm entitled to bid for. Well, well, I've been I've, I've been on the list four years, yeah. and in the four years I've checked on a weekly basis. I've never actually applied until, uh, uh, well, until my mother died, which was, right. you know, on the twelfth of January. I applied shortly after that, and since then, when I look on, uh, it gives a lot of uh, properties that it says underneath that I can't apply for for various reasons from local connections to sheltered and such as that. Yeah. Right, well the ones that mention sheltered, uh, can I take your eight? How old are you, sorry? Just 59. How old? 59. 59? Yeah. 60 in October. Bear with me just a second, I'll just have to log on to the system. Peter Stafford. And what was your date of birth, Peter? 6-10-57. 6 10 57. Let me have a quick look. 6-10, 6-10, 57. Oh, 6 tons, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wait a second. Okay, and what does it say when you try and... Uh, get it, sorry, Peter. Well, on a, it's never said anything really. <clears throat> it, it's just come up with X amount, 80, 90 houses or homes I'm like, eligible for that month, and I've searched through on a regular basis. I've been stopping at my mother's on and off because she's been seriously ill, but when she passed away, 
I'm actually classed as homeless, so I actually applied for an house in Cockermouth, a, a one-bedroom bungalow. But then, right. it, then, then it says on the application that uh, I, I'm skipped. Something skipped. I don't know. Right. Have you uh, spoken to the district council about? Um, I've just been on the phone for 45 minutes to South Lakeland Council. That, yeah, that's Allerdale, isn't it? That though. See, I've just been right. dis I've just been discussing my family connections because, as I said, on the last four, on, on the last. Is it every fortnight you change them? I don't know, uh, uh, every fortnight. On the last law, every other house that came up for eligibility stated that I either wasn't eligible for sheltered, I wasn't eligible because of local connections and, uh, and, and housing criteria, shall we say. I have, yeah, 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 but, but I mean... Are you registered as homeless? I, I'm, I'm down as homeless in Preston. I, I'm, I'm not registered as in looking for anywhere because I, I, I don't want to be in Preston. I've never have wanted to be in Preston. I've been here looking after my parents. That's fine. Have you registered as homeless with South Lake District Council? I've just discussed this with the lady now, actually. She has, she has, me, on, she has me on the list from 2012 when I filled out the application. See, there's also, uh, you know, I also have a problem with this local connection. I mean, I mean, I, I don't know what the criteria is, but I don't really know anyone more locally connected than me. To, to, the, the, the two that came up last week, which I had no intentions of applying for, but I, I just used them as a simple example. Both of them said they had no local connection. One was in Kendall and one was in Windermere. And, well, my mother... It's from Windermere, uh, my mother's from Kendall, sorry, and uh, I have four or five cousins in, in, in Kendall, uh, I have an uncle off my father's side in, Ken, in Kendall, uh, Windermere, I, I don't know how many staffers there are in Windermere, probably 30 or 40, but my, my father's from Windermere, and I know he's dead now, but, you know, I mean, I, I don't have any family anywhere else other than West Cumbria. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I, I've had this information from the very word go. But as she right. just said at South Lakeland Council, she said that I, I'm down as having no local connections. But That's right, yeah, showing up here, same for me. How can I have no local connections? I've got more blood relatives there than probably anybody in the area. <laughs> I'm not being funny. Yeah. Uh... I, have no other, I have no other blood relatives apart from a son in Canada and a sister 30 miles in the other direction. Right. He's not too sure, to be honest, son. Uh, why it's obviously not showing up like that. I really don't know. I'm actually, I'm actually, you know, also quite severely disabled with severe arthritis and suffering, right. suffering a number of other, uh, other issues, you know. And, uh, and like I say, it, it, I've been on the employment support group for, for, for years. And right, have you, sorry, have you actually been on your online account and made sure all up to date? Your call can't be taken at the moment. Sorry? So, please leave your message after the tone. Sorry? Thank you. For sorry, calling. I've got a call coming in. Sorry? Sorry? Hello, yeah? Yeah, yeah, sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry, yeah. have, sorry. Um, have you actually gone on your online account and made sure it's all up to date? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I only updated it last week when I applied for the, the place in Cockermouth because it had, it had the wrong phone number on and the, you know, the wrong, uh, it had the right, it had the wrong landline and the wrong mobile number on. Because and all the details of your family and the connections were... Well, I, well I, I mean, I can give you my family tree if you want. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Apparently, South Lakes Council, the lady I've just talked to by the name of Maria... Uh, Maria Smith or something, she said to me that, that from the application in 2012, it was said that I didn't have local family connections, but I don't really know. My grandparents on my dad's side were born in Windermere. They had a small holding in Windermere. My father and his four brothers and two sisters were all born there. Kendall, my mother, my, my grandparents 
of my mother's side were both from Kendall. My mother's from Kendall. I've got two uncles still living there and an auntie. Uh, I've got more cousins than I can count. Right. You know, I mean, I mean, like the lady says you're living in Preston. I'm not because I, I was made homeless four years ago, and so I've been looking after my mother while stopping here on occasions. But at the same time, I've lived all over the world, from Australia to Canada. You know, to to America. You know, I mean, this this was. What was your address? Uh, sorry, your date of birth again, quickly. Six ten fifty seven. Okay, yeah, 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 great, yeah. Lovely, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, just bear with me one moment and then I will just, um, I'll just look you up, okay? Okay. What's your full name? Peter Stafford. Peter Stafford? Yeah. yeah. What's your date of birth, Peter? 6 10 57. 16th of the. 6 10 57. Is there a certain property that you wanted to bid on that it wasn't letting you bid on? Or? No, no, I bid on a property in, uh, in uh, Cockermouth, a one bedroom apartment, and it said I had no local connections, which is fair enough, I don't in that area. And uh, right. I only bid on it because it had come up three times in a row, it's never been taken. Right. Right, so anyway, I've just talked to the lady at South Lakeland Council and she's looked into it and she said it stated that it was a. Was it a, a 101, a 6 or 106 or something, which had to be a local connection? Ah, uh, section 106, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, that's, yeah. Fa that's fine. I, uh, but <coughs> in the four years that I've been on Cumbria Choice, I've logged in every week, every other week, to check what's available. I've never made a bid until that Cockermouth one, because my mother has just died on the 12th of January. So, you know, her house is now... It, it, it's never been my home, it's her house, it's going to probate, so I've got nowhere to live really. I've had nowhere to live then, but she's, she's let me stay here at the night, you know, since I lost my own home. But what, what I'm trying to say is that it states that I have no local connections on, on two that I noticed in Windermere and Kendall. I wasn't going to apply for them, but I, I'm confused at local connections. Oh, my family are from there. Well, actually, it's the opposite, actually. I need to move there for them to give me some, some support. Right, and I think the other issue is as well, I'm just looking at your, your account, is the, the rent a year side of it as well. But that's been written off. Yeah. It's been written off. It was nothing to do with me. It was actually what my son was supposed to have paid, but 
only being an apprentice he couldn't do, so Preston Council wrote it off because of the right, damage. Right, it's still classed as a debt, even if it's been written off, it's still classed as a, still classed as a debt, so that would sort of have to be looked into and um, documented. Well, there's never been, there's never been a county court action against it or anything. It was written off because of the mental health damage they were causing to me, and it was actually a non-dependence payment that was supposed to be made by a young man who just got his job at, self a job at 16, while I was a full-time carer for a father dying of motor neuron. And Preston Council wrote it off some two and a half years ago. Right, I'm not sure if that was... I'm not sure if it counts has been able to change it because of the fact that it's still classed as a debt. Well, the only the only reason the the, the only reason the, the the debt was put onto the property was because I was a tenant. It was your housing benefit, though, was it? That was. My housing benefit was already cut. Out. My housing benefit <coughs> was cut to forty pounds a week because I was put on appeal for employment support allowance. It took me two years to win it. I'm now in the employment support allowance support group. And I'm also on personal independence allowance. I'm, I'm severely disabled with arthritis. I've, I've, I've uh, numerous other problems, mental health issues, you know. But uh, well, as I say, uh, the the only relatives I have in the country are on the west coast of Cumbria, and I have my, 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 both my grandparents. My grandparents came from Windermere on my father's side. My grandparents came from Kendall on my mother's side. My father so came what, from Windermere. My mother came family, from Kendall. So what family do you have exactly? Who were you getting? Who were you wanting to be moving near to get support from? <clears throat> well, I, I have I have two uncles in in, in in Windermere. I have two uncles in Kendall, an auntie in Kendall. I think nine cousins. It, 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 sons of my brothers. Uh, sons of my father's brothers in Windermere. I, 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 I can give you a family tree and I've probably got 40 or 50 blood relations between Kendall and Windermere. Right, I'm not sure. I'll just, I'd have to have, I'd, we'd have to look into it really, whether you'd count as been able to verify for local connection. Just hold on a moment. Um, no, unfortunately, yeah, it was, I just wanted to double check, but it's immediate family, so we wouldn't class auntie and uncles as a local con a reason for a local connection. Father and mother, even though they're yeah, dead. Yeah, sorry. Well, my, my mother, being born in Kendall and bred in Kendall, yeah, that, that's but not a not, class. No, well, that she's doesn't dead. count, and, and your rent, your rent is, um, cause you What's that got to do with local connections? <laughs> Yeah, we, we, that's your banding. We wouldn't, we certainly here, I don't know about... Well, well, I'll tell you what to do then. We what, wouldn't sorry, sorry, you with, with the rent arrears, I'm afraid. You wouldn't, be able to mean, offer, you wouldn't be able to offer me anything because of the rent arrears, yeah? Yeah, even though they've been, like you say, you're saying if your son's... So it's actually, your so actually what you're saying now is that you're not refusing me properties because of the things you've got wrong well, on you're putting a band according to your situation, so unfortunately you're in the band E, which is a low band... For lo and no local connection and rent and rent arrears. I mean, that's the only so really you, you Lakes housing. Other housing associations might be happy to, you know. So what you're really say, what you're me. really saying is that you've had me on this waiting list for four years, knowing I wouldn't get anything. Well, it's not just ourselves. It's not just South Lakes housing. It's other housing associations, and like I say, they might take a different look approach about the arrears, but. Um, over South Lakes Housing, <clears throat> I'm afraid we wouldn't house anybody with, with arrears. What's your name, please? And also with the, lo with the no local connection as well, I'm afraid. What's your name, please? Uh, 
It's Lindsay. Lindsay. Lindsay Morehouse. Lindsay Morehouse. Uh, right, and uh, what position do you hold? Allocations officer. Allocations officer. Right, and so uh, what I'd like you to do, Lindsay, is uh, get in touch with Gateway Housing Association from Preston. Yeah? Have you got right. that? Yeah? I don't, yeah, I don't understand where they come from. It's not something that we do, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah I need you. I, I, you listen, something. listen. Lindsay, in the four years since I was evicted... You want, are you wanting to get proof of your paying your arrears? You no, I don't pay, pay arrears. I, I, there are no arrears, Lindsay. I was illegally right. evicted. Yeah? Right. If you, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. right. Sending... Lindsay, Lindsay. Sorry, come on. You, I, I have corresponded with Gateway Housing Associations some 10, 20 times in the four years since I was evicted. Not once have they responded to me. I need you to get in touch with them, please. With your... We won't do that, I'm afraid. We, we don't need well, you're, that. you're the only people that they'll probably answer. It's, you, you can send in information to us, if you like, regarding you know what you're saying about the situation with the rent. If you want to send in documentation to us to prove you know what you're telling me... How can I do that when I can't get it off them? They well, won't, we've they've never that, sent me... We've got too many applications, we couldn't do that for everybody. We'd only look into things if we were going to offer somebody a property and then we'd contact the landlord for a reference. They have we never, never once asked me for a penny, for a penny from, they evict, from when they evicted me on the 13th of the 11th, 2012. Right. Well, I, I can't argue with that. You'd need to send us the information into us. How can I get the information when they haven't or... got the information? Well, usually it would be sent out letters if you've got former arrears. And I haven't got before. any. They haven't sent me any because they illegally evicted me, probably. And that's probably the well, reason why. Well, they wouldn't. Well, I don't think they'd be, illegally, be able to illegally evict you. Do you not? Do you not? What, in one hour? Tossed on the street in one hour? Do you well, think that's, that's, what, that's what happens when it has to get to that stage and you, you'll have had letters sent to you in documentation before it got to the eviction day stage. It doesn't happen that you get evicted and not be... Do you allocate houses like Gateway off allocated to me? Absolute pigsties um, that I spent £30,000 on. Do you do that? I don't know. Well, we don't ag allocate houses that are in bad condition. No, we do work well, on they did to me. Them. They did to me. And I had to spend £30,000 on it. And I was evicted in one hour, not for my arrears, for the arrears of a dependent son, a non-dependent. Yeah, but it still counts as your arrears, you see, because you were the tenant. And, if, you know, and so you've you just said to me, Lindsay, pass. as you've said to me, you've never ever had any intention of finding me a home in four years. Well, that isn't the case. You can, everybody, anybody can bid on properties. But yeah, we do look at the fact that... You, you, never, you, were, never ever go, you were never going to get me a home. We wouldn't be able to offer you anything, no, unless, no, they, no. Yeah, unless that was sorted, or we had evi evidence to say otherwise. But so, I'm, only speaking so you... for, I'm, yeah, I'm only speaking for South Lakes Housing. I mean, we're only one of the housing associations that advertise properties on Cumbria Choice. It's not our system. So other housing associations might have been happy to contact you. I'm pretty sure I'm you pass it all between each other, don't you? Sorry? I'm pretty sure you pass all this information between each other. Sorry, I don't understand what you mean. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure you have this information passed from whichever other housing associations on the. Uh, as I said, no, uh, as no, I said, I, I, what, 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 what's the excuse for for last month when I, what, 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 we have... when I logged on last month? What's the excuse for it suddenly having un, ev, under every other you know any under every other house you know a reason why I couldn't apply. Don't know which properties it was that you were trying to. Well, no, up. no. In four years, there's never been anything under any of them. It just comes up every month with, or every fortnight or whatever, with the 80, 90 houses, homes I'm eligible to bid for. Yeah, yeah and say it's nothing else. But the last time, the last fortnights, the ones bid for that ended on the 17th, I think, under every other house, it either stated I didn't meet the housing criteria. It stated I didn't have a local connection. It stated I wasn't entitled to sheltered. No, unfortunately, a lot of them do have that. No, you do this. You do it. All this comes through South... south you, you, the people I'm talking to now. I've just been told that by South Lakeland Council. So, you know, the, 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 all these... All the information comes through you, Lindsay. No, the, the, yeah, from 
your application, the only information we have is what we hold on the application, which which you've completed. Yeah, and you and you and you and you give that information to everyone from home group to impact housing, yeah? No, we don't give that information. The information is held under Cumbria Choice, and anybody that advertises under Cumbria Choice accesses the same. So as so as I say, so anybody been... can look into anybody's application because if anybody bids on a property. They need to go into that application. We're only dealing with your application, which means any changes that need to be made to it that you would let us know of, then we're the ones that would do that. So anybody else can see your application, just like we can see any other applications on there. So, uh, so what you're saying to me now is that I, I you know, I, I, I might as well be taken off because I'm not going to get a home. No, well, at the moment, I'm afraid, no, you wouldn't. We, that public housing, wouldn't be able to offer you anything, but. That's what I'm saying. Other house associations might be happy to take... When you're talking about home. other housing associations, are you talking about the home group and impact housing? Uh, impact home, two castles. I can't speak for any of them. I can only speak for ourselves at South Lakes Housing. And we've, you know, the way it stands, obviously, we've, we've shown that you had rent arrears, although you say that, you know, you didn't. But the way it stands with us is we wouldn't be able to offer somebody with that. And what about sheltered? Sheltered housing, no, it would be, be the same for any of our housing. 60 years old, severely disabled, yeah, and you won't offer someone... But, you know, if you, like, if you wanted to get information through to us, I know you said you didn't have any, but if you wanted to contact Gateway and get some information through to us, saying otherwise... And then they won't correspond that. with me, Lindsay, I've told you. Right. They won't correspond with me. I've tried on numerous occasions. I've wrote various letters. Right. Well, I can't help you on that one, I'm afraid. I think they were pretty embarrassed at what they did, my dear. I think they were right. pretty embarrassed at what they did, actually. You know? Right. Well, sorry about that. I mean, I can't suggest anything else, really. We would need to see the information ourselves and have a look at, you know, changing your banding. We couldn't do it otherwise. And how many bands do you have? Well, it's band A to band E. Band E is the lowest band. Yeah. I'm back with a pile, eh, at 60. After spending a lifetime building houses as a brickie, severely disabled with arthritis, and I can't even get a roof over me, eh? Wonderful, innit? Tell you what, housing associations are poisonous, my dear, like Gateway. Gateway got old Preston's council houses for a pound each. Where do you get yours from? Well, I don't know. What, what, do, you, what do you want to do? What about, well, 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 it sounds like I've got. It sounds like there's nothing I can do, Lindsay. Is there? There's nothing I can do. Is there? You're not prepared. No one's prepared for you. Well, it's not me. I'm in a position. Well, I can't do anything. Well, I'm just not prepared to help you. Well, I don't know what to do. I'm just saying, Gateway Housing Association won't correspond with me. Preston City Council have me listed as a tenant. Well, Gateway Housing Association won't correspond with me. Preston City Council have me listed as homeless, but I've never made any effort whatsoever since the date I was evicted on the 13th of the 11th, 2012, to help me. During that time, I spent looking after a seriously ill father, well, who apparently just uh, just died just before the eviction, and a mother who's just died on the 12th of January. I'm not asking you to help me at all, Lindsay. In fact, you know, it sounds as though you're not out to help anybody. I bid you farewell anyway. You might as well take my name off the list. Yeah? Bye-bye. Well, you, you keep on. What's the fucking point? Excuse my language. Well... Like I say, I don't understand why you can't ring Gateway and get them to... Ring Gateway? Do you know what? Let me tell you something, yeah? If I was to ring Gateway, I'd probably have the police round up. Yeah? The amount right, of people... Okay. The amount of people from Gateway that have threatened me with physical violence, the amount of people who've intimida intimidated me over the last few years has been horrendous. I was put under an injunction for two years through a Gateway Housing Association rent recovery team and safety team who have lied through their front teeth in Preston County Court and uh, other courts. You know, okay. I am uh, pretty much... Uh, I'm coming back to Cumbria anyway, Lindsay. I'll be looking up a few houses when I get back there because I'm coming back to my roots. Because as I say, yeah, both my grandparents, right. both my grandparents, yeah, on my father's side were born in Windermere and lived in Windermere all their life. Both my grandparents on my mother's side were born and lived in Kendal all their life. I have three uncles and an auntie in Kendal. I've got two uncles and about 18 cousins in... You must know the name, Stafford, surely. Do you know where you're from? No, I don't. 
Uh, where, 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 is, where, is, where, is, where is where is South Lakes County? Where is this? I'm phoning now. Where is this? Where? We're in Kendall. You're in Kendall. You don't know me, Stafford, Philipsons. Uh, no, because I'm not from Kendall. Right. Uh, are you local? Have you got local housing? I'm not far away, but I'm not in Kendall, so. Yeah, I've got, far, I've, got, I've, got, I've got aunties and uncles and blood relations all up the west coast of Cumbria. And yeah, I'm not entitled to anywhere up there, yeah? Well, you know, you can still carry on bidding and other health associations might have a look at your application. It's but you're not going to do. How well, come? we wouldn't we why, 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 no. why, why, when I've talked to South Lake, why, when I've talked to South Lakeland Council before in Kendall, you know, I don't mean you under this name, but the council itself, why have they said everything goes through you? Your application's dealt with by us, if that's what they mean. So what they're saying is that everything that's on, they initially get my information, they put it onto you, and you are informing everybody from the home group to impact housing about my state, you know, yeah, my we, situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so don't go, mean, don't, don't yeah, go, don't go telling me I've got any more chance with anybody else. You're organising the fact that I will never have a home or a house. We put the information on, but other house associations might offer you in band E a property. I don't, what I'm saying. I don't think I'm so. Do you? I don't think so. I, how many people in band E? have received a property in the last four years. Well, other pe yeah, some people do. There's other areas that are hard to let properties, you know, not really in those areas so much. But well, near Cumbria, my relatives, near the people yeah, I need, well, and near the, near the people that I need to look after me. Near me uncles yeah, well, and me. Yeah, I've been in other areas in Cumbria that's harder to let. They would probably look at people in Bandy to, to offer them to. It's just houses within Kendall area isn't really hard to let, so we don't usually look at, you know, anybody in Bandy that has to rent areas. So, so what's the excuse for the one I uh, applied for at Cockermouth that actually has been on three times in a row? Well, not been yeah, I mean, there's no reason why they might, you know, they might not, con you know, they might have not contacted you. But unfortunately, with it being a section 106, they won't be able to do that. But why was it advertised three times in a row? Yeah, because obviously they haven't got anybody bid for it. That's bit... been suitable with a local connection. Friday. I bid you farewell. But I mean, you could give them a ring and have a chat to them, you know, if they're still advertising it, and then. I've given up with Cumbria and Zub. I think I'll probably move to Scotland. <sighs> Bye. The State Party launched a major policy reform to the welfare system. Views of persons with disabilities were not meaningfully taken into account in the decision making and had little or no influence on policy decisions. Measures have caused financial hardship to persons with disabilities, resulting in arrears, debts, evictions and cuts to essentials such as housing and food. Claimants saw support that they received substantially reduced, so their essential needs such as daily personal care were not sufficiently covered. The reforms have resulted in people experiencing increased reliance on family and kinship carers, reduction in their social interaction, increased isolation and, in certain cases, institutionalisation. Reduction in services at the local level has curtailed the ability of disabled people to take part in community life. Persons with disabilities have been regularly portrayed negatively as being dependent or making a living out of benefits, committing fraud as benefit claimants, being lazy and putting a burden on taxpayers who are paying money for nothing. Persons with disabilities continue to experience increasing hostility, aggressive behaviour and sometimes attacks to their personal integrity. The inquiry also found no substantiation of the alleged benefit fraud by persons with disabilities. The State Party have met the threshold of grave or systematic violations of the rights of persons with disabilities.
founded in 1969 by the Church of Scientology, the Citizens Commission on Human Rights investigates and exposes psychiatric violations of human rights. From its international headquarters in Los Angeles, California, CCHR documents psychiatry's invasive and destructive practices and publishes its findings, making them available in some 15 languages. More than 12 million copies have been distributed to healthcare professionals, government officials, educators, and business leaders world over. The headquarters is also the site of the world-renowned exhibit, Psychiatry, an Industry of Death. Centered around 14 documentary films, this state-of-the-art exhibition presents the history of psychiatry, from its origins, where the mentally ill were caged like animals, to the present-day mass drugging of society as the cure for invented mental disorders. Traveling versions of the exhibit visit hundreds of cities across five continents, opening the way for hundreds of thousands to discover for themselves the dark truth behind psychiatry. What is today a global human rights movement began more than 30 years ago with a fight for the freedom of one individual, Victor Giori, forcibly committed to a Pennsylvania psychiatric hospital. He was interviewed by a psychiatrist who said, I can't understand the word this man is saying. He's incoherent. Obviously, a paranoid schizophrenic. Commit him, which they did. Now, he wasn't babbling incoherently, he was speaking Hungarian. We filed a lawsuit against the hospital. In the middle of the case, the doctor who was the head of the hospital stands up and he says, we want nothing more to do with Victor Giori. The release of Victor Giori was the first of thousands of cases throughout the world, helped by CCHR. CCHR challenged involuntary commitment laws throughout the United States and internationally and what we found was that people were being incarcerated without any legal rights. They had no right to an attorney. They could be drugged, shot, lobotomized without their consent. Example, Australia 1977, where CCHR exposed a psychiatric practice called deep sleep treatment. Patients were being knocked unconscious with a cocktail of barbiturates and other psychiatric drugs and they were being subjected to electroshock treatment daily, sometimes twice daily, without their knowledge. Deep sleep treatment had led to 48 deaths. It was CCHR that investigated it, exposed it, and fought for over a decade until deep sleep treatment was banned. In South Africa, CCHR exposed psychiatric camps where mental patients were kept and brutalized and then farmed out as slave labor. In Italy, CCHR worked with legislators and the media, conducting raids on psychiatric hospitals, the conditions of which were barbaric, and CCHR got them shut down. In Japan, CCHR exposed the financial crimes of psychiatrists and hospitals that were defrauding the government and taxpayers. The guilty were tried, and the hospitals put out of business. And in the United States, CCHR uncovered a billion-dollar fraud in the nation's largest chain of private mental health facilities. 600 federal agents conducted raids across 20 states. Dozens of prosecutions ensued, millions of dollars in fines imposed, and the entire chain of corrupt hospitals was permanently closed. And behind many public warnings you see today about psychiatric drugs is CCHR. CCHR has documented the side effects of these drugs, has taken evidence to the FDA, has gone to Congress, has obtained congressional hearings. It took 13 years before the FDA finally admitted that those drugs can cause suicide and issued black box warnings. We got nine state laws passed. Following that, it was the introduction of the Child Medication Safety Act in 2004. Over a three-year period, Due to the efforts of CCHR and others, there have been more than 60 government warnings exposing the dangers of psychiatric drugs. People do have problems in life. Sometimes they can be very serious. But the last thing you want to do is hurt them, and that's what psychiatric treatment does. There are alternatives. There are treatments and methods that will actually help people without the violence of drugs and electroshock and they're economical as well. And that is a threat to a vested interest that is making billions of dollars from psychiatric drugs every year.
History has shown that virtually every workable treatment, every one that has been available for the seriously mentally disturbed, people who actually need help, has been suppressed or shut down by the vested interests of psychiatry and the pharmaceutical industry. The public's largely been getting their information from the industry that benefits on putting them on psychiatric drugs. It's an advertising campaign. It's not science, it's marketing. CCHR is causing things to change by being champions for a growing number of well-intentioned people who are risking their professional careers to speak up against the abuses of psychiatry. Having that support from a group like this has made a tremendous difference in what I feel personally that I've been able to accomplish. I think of CCHR as, as fellow soldiers. I'm unaware of any other organization that does the kind of work that CCHR does, particularly on the, the scope and the level that they do. CCH has been very effective at moving the ball down the field, one at a time, one state at a time, one legislator at a time. CCHR has had the resources to be able to teach and have legislators become more aware of what the problem with the psychotropic drugs are. CCHR has researched the issue. When you need the facts, you go to CCHR. Today, CCHR has over 250 chapters in dozens of countries around the world. Wherever and whenever psychiatrists abuse human rights, CCHR takes its message to the streets. From the United States to Japan, and from Canada to the United Kingdom, prominent members of CCHR lead marches to secure the protection and freedom from psychiatric abuse for everyone. It's essential that CCHR does their job and gets the support to do their job, because the extent to which they do the whole vehicle that's out of control about psychiatry gets to be contained and gets to be eliminated. It scares me to think if this doesn't happen. I've seen up close what it's like, and it scares the daylight out of me. You have 100,000 people electroshocked every year. You have 17 million children worldwide taking mind-altering drugs. You have people being involuntarily committed every 75 seconds, and it's all under the guise of mental health. The only way that you are going to get humane treatment into the mental health system is to take psychiatry and the vested interests out of the picture. And only then will you see people truly obtaining mental health. You have two choices. Either you pretend you knew nothing about it, or you do something about it. With knowledge comes responsibility. That's why we're here. That's why people are joining forces with CCHR. Thousands from every faith and walk of life have already joined. CCHR investigates and exposes psychiatric violations of human rights, and will continue to do so until psychiatry's abusive and coercive practices cease, and human rights and dignity are returned to all. Your help is needed. Join us in the fight.